Digital Equipment Corporation Alpha. Digital Equipment Corporation, better known as DEC, created the Alpha processor in the early 1990s. Alpha was a 64-bit RISC CPU family at a time when most mainstream chips were still 32-bit. This gave it an immediate edge in handling large datasets, scientific workloads, and high-end computing tasks. Alpha was designed with speed in mind. It had a very clean instruction set, aggressive clock speeds, and was built to scale up as semiconductor processes improved. For a while, it was the fastest CPU in the world, hitting performance milestones years before Intel or AMD could match. DEC sold Alpha systems mainly to businesses and researchers who needed raw performance. However, Alpha never gained mass market traction because it was expensive and software support was limited compared to x86. When Compaq acquired DEC in 1998, Alpha's future became uncertain. And when Hewlett-Packard later absorbed Compaq, HP decided to kill Alpha entirely in favor of Intel's upcoming Itanium project. That decision marked the end of what many engineers considered one of the most advanced processor designs of its time, Transmeta, Crusoe CPU. Transmeta was a startup that tried to change how CPUs work in the late 1990s. Instead of building a traditional x86 compatible processor like Intel or AMD, they developed a unique design called Code Morphing. The hardware itself was based on a very simple, low-power core, while special software translated x86 86 instructions on the fly. This allowed Transmeta chips, like the Crusoe, to run standard Windows and PC software while consuming much less energy than competitors. The company was heavily hyped before launch. Investors and the media believed Crusoe could revolutionize laptops and mobile devices by offering longer battery life and cooler operation compared to Intel's hot, power-hungry Pentium 3. Early demonstrations showed impressive potential, but when the processors reached the market, real-world performance was disappointing. The Trans Translation layer introduced overhead, meaning Crusoe chips often ran slower than expected. Software compatibility was not always perfect, and manufacturers were hesitant to bet on an unproven technology. Transmeta released follow-ups like the Ephesion processor, but they never gained major adoption. By the mid-2000s, Intel had improved its mobile processors, reducing power consumption while keeping higher performance. That erased Transmeta's main advantage. Eventually, the company abandoned CPU design and shifted to licensing its intellectual property. What started as a bold challenge to Intel and AMD ended up as one of the most famous cautionary tales in CPU history. Cyrix Budget X86 CPUs. Cyrix was founded in 1988 and became known throughout the 1990s as a scrappy competitor to Intel and AMD in the X86 processor market. Instead of targeting the high end, Cyrix focused on budget-friendly CPUs that delivered just enough performance to run Windows PCs at a lower cost. Their chips, like the Cyrix 486 and later the 6x86 series, were often paired with motherboards in value-oriented computers sold at retail outlets. Cyrix CPUs were technically interesting because they sometimes offered higher integer performance than Intel's Pentium chips at the same clock speed. However, they struggled in floating-point performance, which hurt them in 3D gaming and heavy math applications. Still, Cyrix found a niche among budget-conscious consumers and PC builders who wanted cheaper alternatives to Intel. As competition increased, Cyrix faced pressure on multiple fronts. AMD was improving rapidly with the K6 and Athlon processors, while Intel kept scaling the Pentium line. Cyrix lacked the resources to keep up in design and marketing. In 1997, the company merged with National Semiconductor, which used Cyrix designs to target low power and embedded markets. Eventually, Cyrix technology was folded into VIA Technologies after VIA acquired National Semiconductor's CPU division in 1999. After that, the Cyrix name disappeared, leaving behind a legacy as one of the more memorable underdog brands of the 1990s PC era. National Semiconductor Geode Line National Semiconductor entered the CPU market by acquiring Cyrix in 1997. But instead of pushing into mainstream desktop competition with Intel and AMD, the company redirected focus toward low-power processors. This led to the development of the Geode Line, a family of x86 compatible CPUs optimized for energy efficiency rather than raw performance. Geode chips were designed for embedded systems, thin clients, set-top boxes, and other compact devices where battery life and heat output mattered more than processing speed. Geode processors stood out because they could run standard PC operating systems like Windows and Linux while consuming very little power. That combination made them appealing for industrial applications, kiosks, and lightweight computing devices. While never a household name, Geode found a quiet but steady role in niche markets.
circuits. In 2003, Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, acquired the GOD product line. AMD continued to produce and support these chips for years, but they remained a side business compared to AMD's mainstream desktop and server CPUs. As the embedded market shifted toward ARM-based processors, demand for x86 low-power solutions declined. By the late 2000s, Geode gradually faded away, remembered mostly as an early attempt to bring x86 architecture into ultra-low-power environments before ARM completely took over that space. VIA Technology Centaur CPU VIA Technologies, a Taiwanese company better known for chipsets, made its way into the CPU market in the late 1990s by acquiring Cyrix's remains and Centaur Technology, a small American processor design firm. Through Centaur, VIA developed a line of x86 compatible CPUs aimed at low-power, low-cost computing. These chips, often branded as C3, C7, and later Nano, never competed directly with Intel's Pentium or AMD's Athlon in performance, but they targeted niche markets like embedded systems, thin clients, and small form factor PCs. Centaur CPUs were unique because they emphasized efficiency, compact design, and integrated features rather than raw speed. For example, some VIA chips included strong hardware-level encryption support years before Intel and AMD mainstreamed those features. This made them attractive for security-focused applications. However, limited performance and weak marketing meant that VIA processors rarely appeared in consumer desktops or laptops. Over time, the rise of ARM processors in mobile and embedded systems eroded VIA's remaining CPU presence. Centaur continued to quietly design x86 CPUs for specialized uses, but by the 2010s, VIA was largely forgotten as a CPU vendor. In 2021, Centaur made headlines briefly when Intel acquired part of its engineering team, essentially marking the end of VIA's role in the x86 market. Though small, Centaur CPUs are remembered as one of the last alternative voices in an industry dominated by Intel and AMD, IBM PowerPC, desktop era. In the early 1990s, IBM, Motorola, and Apple formed the AIM Alliance to create the PowerPC architecture. PowerPC was a risk design meant to challenge Intel's dominance in personal computing. Unlike x86, which was complex and burdened with legacy instructions, PowerPC promised cleaner design, higher efficiency, and strong performance per clock. Apple adopted PowerPC for its Macintosh computers starting in 1994, replacing the Motorola 68000 series. For more than a decade, PowerPC powered every Mac, from the early Power Macintosh to the colorful iMac G3 and professional Power Mac towers. These CPUs gave Apple a unique identity, differentiating their machines from the Windows PCs that relied on Intel or AMD. In some cases, PowerPC chips delivered excellent performance, especially in multimedia and graphics-heavy tasks. IBM also promoted PowerPC as a general-purpose architecture, using it in servers, game consoles like the Nintendo GameCube and Wii, and even the PlayStation 3's cell processor derivative. Despite technical strengths, PowerPC struggled to keep pace with Intel's rapid advances. Heat and power efficiency became major issues, especially in laptops. By the mid-2000s, Apple grew frustrated with the slow development cycle and IBM's inability to deliver competitive mobile chips. In 2006, Apple made the historic decision to switch the Mac lineup entirely to Intel processors. That move ended PowerPC's role in mainstream desktop computing, though the architecture lived on in servers, consoles, and embedded systems. For most people, PowerPC is remembered as the CPU family that once defined the Mac era before Intel took over. Sun Microsystems, S-P-A-R-C. Sun Microsystems developed the SPARC architecture in the late 1980s as part of the wave of RISC processors designed to challenge traditional CISC designs like x86. Spark, short for Scalable Processor Architecture, was built with modularity and scalability in mind. It powered Sun's high-performance workstations and servers, which became popular in universities, research labs, and internet infrastructure throughout the 1990s. SPARC systems were known for reliability, multitasking strength, and the ability to handle demanding workloads such as databases and scientific computing. SPARC's open architecture allowed other manufacturers to design their own implementations, giving it flexibility across different performance tiers. At its peak, SPARC was one of the most widely deployed RISC architectures in the server market, competing directly with IBM's Power Architecture and Hewlett-Packard's PARISC. Sun positioned SPARC as the backbone of enterprise computing, especially for mission-critical environments. However, the rise of cheaper x86 
86 servers and the consolidation of the enterprise hardware market eroded SPARC's share. When Oracle acquired Sun Microsystems in 2010, Spark development continued but slowed dramatically. Oracle focused on incremental updates rather than groundbreaking innovations. As cloud computing expanded and x86 servers dominated, SPARC steadily lost relevance. Today, it survives only in legacy systems and niche uses. Remembered as one of the defining risk families of the workstation and server era that eventually gave way to commodity x86 hardware. MIPS Technologies, RISC Pioneer. MIPS Technologies introduced one of the earliest and most influential RISC architectures in the mid-1980s. The name MIPS stands for Microprocessor Without Interlocked Pipeline Stages, reflecting its streamlined design philosophy. MIPS processors emphasized simplicity and efficiency, which allowed them to achieve high performance with relatively few transistors. This made them cheaper to produce and easier to adapt for different uses compared to more complex architectures like x86. In the 1990s, MIPS CPUs appeared in a wide variety of products. They powered silicon graphics workstations, which were famous for advanced 3D graphics and were used to create visual effects in Hollywood movies. MIPS also found its way into consumer electronics, most famously in the Sony PlayStation and PlayStation 2 consoles, as well as in routers, set-top boxes, and embedded devices. The architecture's flexibility and efficiency made it a popular choice across industries. Despite these successes, MIPS gradually declined as competition grew. Intel and AMD dominated PCS, IBM's Power PC held its ground in consoles and servers, and ARM began taking over the embedded market. MIPS struggled to keep up with development costs and lost key design wins. By the 2000s, the brand was mostly relegated to low-end and legacy applications. Ownership of MIPS changed hands multiple times, and while the architecture still exists, it has little presence in mainstream computing today. It is remembered as a pioneering risk design whose influence far outweighed its long-term market share. P-A-R-I-S-C, Hewlett-Packard, P-A-R-I-S-C, short for Precision Architecture, R-I-S-C, was Hewlett-Packard's proprietary processor line introduced in the mid-1980s. Designed for HP's high-end workstations and servers, P-A-R-I-S-C was built around the principles of reduced instruction set computing, offering streamlined operations for higher efficiency and performance. HP tailored the architecture to excel in scientific, engineering, and enterprise workloads, positioning it as a competitor to Sun's SPARC and IBM's power processors. Throughout the 1990s, PARISC powered a wide range of HP systems and earned a reputation for reliability and solid performance in mission-critical environments. The architecture evolved steadily, with improved improvements in clock speed, memory bandwidth, and multiprocessing support. Businesses that relied on HPUX, Hewlett Packard's UNIX operating system, often ran it on PARISC machines. However, HP eventually faced the same challenge that doomed many proprietary architectures, the rising dominance of commodity x86 hardware. Maintaining a unique CPU line required enormous investment, and the market for specialized RISC workstations and servers was shrinking. In the late 1990s, in the 90s, HP partnered with Intel to create the next-generation Itanium processor, intending it to replace PARISC. Once Itanium became the official future, PARISC development was gradually wound down. Support lingered for legacy systems, but by the 2000s, PARISC was effectively discontinued. Today, it is remembered as a solid, reliable architecture that gave HP control over its hardware ecosystem before being abandoned in the transition to Itanium. Itanium. Intel and HP. Itanium was launched in 2001 as a joint project between Intel and Hewlett-Packard, intended to revolutionize the CPU market. Unlike x86 or RISC designs, Itanium was built on a completely new architecture called EPIC, short for Explicitly Parallel Instruction Computing. The idea was that compilers, not the CPU itself, would handle the heavy lifting of scheduling instructions to run in parallel. This promised massive performance gains if software was optimized for it. On paper, Itanium was supposed to replace not only HP's PARISC, but also Sun's SPARC, IBM's Power, and even high-end x86 servers. Intel marketed it as the inevitable future of computing, with the potential to dominate enterprise data centers. Early benchmarks showed strength in specialized 
specialized workloads, but problems emerged quickly. Titanium was expensive, required entirely new software, and had poor backward compatibility with x86. Developers were reluctant to rewrite applications to take advantage of EPIC features, which left Titanium underused in most environments. Meanwhile, x86 processors kept improving. Intel's own Xeon chips and AMD's Opteron offered 64-bit extensions that let companies keep running existing software with minimal changes. This destroyed Titanium's main advantage. Over the years, Intel released multiple generations, but adoption stayed limited to a shrinking niche of HP servers. By the 2000s, it was clear that Itanium had failed to live up to its promises. Intel finally discontinued the line in 2021. Today, Itanium is remembered as one of the most ambitious and expensive failures in CPU history, an architecture that aimed to replace everything and ended up replaced itself. I made an awesome video about every CPU architecture, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?